Hey everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. Well, first of all, I wanted to say thank you to my buddy Jim. Jim is uh, always sending me emails and suggestions, and, and the chord structure that's used in this lesson came from Jim. He had recommended this, and I thought this would be perfect for this little how to jam, how to improvise mini series. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at over this week and then next week as well. Uh, next week, we're going to have eight more measures of new licks to add to this. So this is, this will be fun. But I'm going to show you how to improvise like I did in the intro. And I'm going to demystify a lot of those things. Um, I know a lot of you get stuck. You get to a point where you know your basic scales and even know a handful of licks, but you're not sure how to put it all together. And so, uh, hopefully, that some light bulbs will go off in this uh, in this lesson series. And so, uh, if you're a premium member, be sure to download uh, the jam track because the jam track is really the key to this whole thing. Because it's got you're going to have to play the lead part for uh, two times through or eight measures, but then you're going to have to play the rhythm part and accompany the lead part, which will be on the jam track. You'll see what I mean. I'll explain it. But uh, anyway, you're gonna, it's going to kind of keep you on your toes, and, and it would be something that you would experience if you're in a real live uh, jam scenario. So whether you're in a band or just playing with another guitar player. But you have the luxury of just playing along with an MP3 in this uh, instance. If you're a beginner and you're wanting, you want to do this, but it seems too intimidating, don't run away from it because uh, I've got a slower version of the, the jam track for beginners. Um, and this would be something that even if you're brand new to the guitar, you could be able to pick up on a lot of that and at least understand it until you you know your muscle memory kicks in and you'll be able to play along. Um, if you are a premium member, you have access to the jam tracks, you have access to the tablature, the, the extra video content as well. And there's an on-screen tab viewer, which is a new feature, which allows you to uh, loop certain sections. You can slow down the playback and watch all the tab on, on your screen in real time. So it's very cool. Um, if, uh, if you're not a premium member, check it out. Go to ActiveMelody.com. In the top right uh, corner, there's a little blue button on it. And you can click on that and find out more about membership. Very affordable. And I have hundreds of lessons like this. And I come out with a new one each week with all the lear learning assets that you need, all the jam tracks and things that you need to be able to learn the stuff. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the first part. All right, so I've got my Taylor guitar with uh, the fret markers on here. And the reason I switched guitars is because it makes it easier to follow along. The other guitar didn't have fret markers. This is my least favorite guitar, by the way. I'm not a huge fan of this one at all. That's another story I'll have to share sometime. But anyway, let's get into the chords uh, for this. And there's four chords. Um, and I'm gonna, I have a separate video, by the way, on the strumming pattern and the fingerings of these chords. That's all at EP099 at ActiveMelody.com. So, uh, so for this, we're just going to talk through the real quick the, what the four chords are. We have the A7. We have the D9. Then we go to a G13. And then a C. So it's really an A, a D, a G, and a C. By adding the 9 and the 13, you're just making it sound a little fancier. You don't have to add them, but that's really what uh, what the structure is in that order. So um, so we have a different technique that's being used um, when playing lead in this. Um, typically, what uh, what I do is I stay in the key that the song is in. So for example, if we're playing a 12-bar blues in A, I'm just going to stay in the A minor pentatonic scale, no matter what the chord changes to. When it goes to the D chord, when it goes to the E chord, and back to the A, I would just stay in the A minor pentatonic scale for the most part. I might switch to the major pentatonic scale, like B.B. King does, but that's really how, uh, how I think of playing a solo. And this style, however, that we're going to do it completely different, where we're going to actually switch keys as the chords change. So four times in this, we're going to be switching keys. And that's what gives it a different feel. You'll notice it, it, it almost takes on a life of its own. And you could play this lead part, by the way, with no accompaniment, and it would actually kind of make sense to your ear because you're defining it with the notes. Uh, so anyway, just a different approach. I'm going to be referring to patterns as well. We're going to start with pattern one, and all of the patterns are covered uh, in the blues lead course at ActiveMelody.com. So uh, if you're familiar with that, you're going to know where we're at. If you're not, make sure you check it out, because um, there's five patterns, and, and we're going to, I'll be referring to them, at least patterns one and four, as we talk through this. Okay, so the first chord. The A7. So the first thing that I did was I played this little lead part right over the A7 like this. 
And so I know some of you are scratching your head going, wait a minute, where does that come from? Well, let's talk about that. So the A minor pentatonic scale, I always think of that as home base. This may, you know, maybe that's how you think of it too. But when you're playing A, wherever you make your bar chord, that's your root fret. And um, when we play the A minor pentatonic scale, it looks like this. Pattern one, that is. So that's pattern one of the A minor pentatonic scale. Now the A major pentatonic scale, uh, so remember, minor pentatonic scale sounds kind of sad, bluesy. Major has more of a happy feel. Um, so the major pentatonic scale is the exact same pattern. You just shift it down one, two, three frets. And that works for any chord and any scale. If you want to get to the major pentatonic scale, you just go down three frets from where you started, from your root fret. So check this out. So there's a reference. There's the A. So you can see it has a happier sound. And if we add a few more notes, we can get Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Da, which is the A major scale, not the A major pentatonic scale. It's the A major scale. Um, pentatonic means it's just the major scale, but penta means five. So you've only got five notes out of that, just kind of your core notes. So it's kind of a stripped down version. And that's really, I mean, that's that's all there is to these scales. So, so that's the A. Uh, uh, minor pentatonic and then the A major pentatonic. Okay, so now when I play this leg, you're going to notice that I'm switching between, I'm blending the major, the minor pentatonic scale and the major. We're putting them together. And here's how that works. There's an overlap that happens right here. So there's your minor pentatonic scale, right? So pattern two of the major pentatonic scales, follow with me. So you got major pattern one, right here, right? Now major pentatonic scale pattern two would be right here. Well, that that's your secret sauce right here. These notes, because look what happens for the for an A. You have that right in the middle of the minor pentatonic scale, which is here. So now you have all of these little notes to play with, and watch what you can do. So you can start to see how, hopefully, that demystifies some of this, that, you know, and you realize that it's really not that difficult. It's just two scales that are overlapping. I wish I had acetate to lay over the guitar, but that's why this lick. That's why it works, is because you're jumping right, you're playing some notes in the major pentatonic scale, some notes in the minor. So it doesn't really feel neither happy nor sad, it just has kind of a jazzy feel. Okay, so let's get into the specific notes. I know it's a digression, but I, I think it's important to point these things out, because what I want you to do is I want you to take away the ability to just make up whatever you want. So you're not limited to what I show you, you can start to make up your own stuff. So on the fifth fret, third string... We're going to start with playing that note, and then we're going to hammer on to the 6th fret 3rd string, just like that. Then I'm going to come up to the 5th fret 2nd string, then the 7th fret 2nd string, back to the 5th fret 2nd string. Now let's cover that. Let's not get any farther. So we have... You can see there's the hammer on. Okay. Now watch this. You can see I'm just staying in that little box there. Remember when I showed you pattern two of the major pentatonic scale? That's really kind of where we're at. So that's just going back and forth between fret seven and five. That we start on the first string. So it's seven, five. Now we're back to seven, but this is time on the second string. Seven, five. So there's a little box there. So let's back up. We have. Let me do it slowly. Now watch this. See how that had a more of a bluesy feel? That's because I went, look, just visualize. You can see I'm right at the top of the minor pentatonic scale, pattern one for the key of A. So, so when we come up here, and I use my ring finger for this, some of you may want to use your pinky, but 
I come up to the eighth fret second string. Notice I'm keeping this finger down because I'm I'm gonna watch what happens. I'm gonna take my finger off the fretboard, put it back down on the seventh fret second string, and then back to that fifth fret second string. So that's how that looks. Alright, let's back up. So we have So uh, that's the A part. Now, uh, and like if the A had extended for maybe two measures instead of one, you would just stay in A. So that's what I did. I, st I was right between the A minor and the A major. I could have went like this. That's also in the minor pentatonic, or that's also in the key of A, but that's a minor, just stayed in the minor pentatonic scale. You can see it had a different feel. It felt more bluesy. As opposed to okay so there's the a part then we go to the d the d9 and for the d9 i came up here and played now let's you can see you can hear with your ear that i switched keys there so we were here now we're in a different key and the reason we switch keys is because we switch chords there's a, remember, this is just sort of a different way of approaching lead, but it's powerful when you switch the key along with the chord. It's just a little more difficult to do because you have to really be on your toes and be thinking about visualizing on the neck. Okay, so we're now in D. So where, what are my boundaries to work with? All right, so for D, if we're playing the D major bar chord, we'd be up here, and we'd be barring the 10th fret. So there's your D chord, right? So the D minor pentatonic scale, remember it plays off that root fret, looks like this. Right? That's the minor pentatonic scale. So thus, the D major pentatonic scale, remember we just slide down one, two, three frets. Now it's going to sound a little happier. So that's the D major pentatonic scale right here. So just visualize we have the seventh fret and we're up here to the tenth fret and we're kind of that's the top of pattern one, okay? So then when I play this, what ha what I did was I started with this note. Now this will this will be the curveball for some of you and you'll say, wait a minute, that's not part of the minor pentatonic scale. So where is that note coming from? Well, there's another scale. <laughs> no, I'm not. I promise this is the end of the scales. But there's, and I, I have a whole video on this. It's called the Mixolydian scale. Actually, in that video, I pronounced it Mixolydian. I always thought that wasn't. Maybe I had Nickelodeon in my head or something. But it's the Mixolydian scale. And the Mixolydian scale is the same scale as the major scale. The only difference is, remember, the major scale is Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. The, may, the only difference is the seventh note, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you're going to flat that note. So let me give you an example. So in the key of D, that's the major scale for the key of D. But here's the Mixolydian scale for D. See the seventh note? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I, I flatted that one. That's a, a minor little difference, but that one change in your scale can give you a whole bunch of new uh, variables to work with. And you'll hear guys like Jerry Garcia from The Grateful Dead uh, and the Almond Brothers. A lot of these jam bands will go into the Mixolydian uh, scale mode because it gives you, it just has more of a jam type feel. It doesn't resolve, it kind of, and so because of that, it, it allows you to. To just kind of keep going with it, as opposed to something like this, that resolved. It sounded like a complete sentence. If I'm communicating to you, I just said a sentence that makes sense, as opposed to some of these with the. It did. It didn't finish, and so it leaves you kind of wanting more, and that's why you can extend these jams, you know. Uh, so anyway, that's getting into my own. Some of that's my own personal theory, but um, all right. So. We're going to start it here on the 8th fret 1st string with our middle finger. And then we're going to come to the 7th fret 1st string. Now we're down to the 10th fret 2nd string. And then the 7th fret 10th... I'm sorry, the 7th fret 2nd fret string. So let, those are your first four notes. Watch this. 
So hopefully you understand why those notes work. This is that mixolydian scale thing. Okay, now watch this. Okay, let's back up. We have now we have now I come down here and I use my ring finger for this, but and I'm on the tenth fret third string. I keep my pointer finger down on the seventh fret second string, but watch this. You can hear I play those two and I keep it down to keep, almost intentionally create that clash. It just sounds wrong, but when you play it up to sp speed or up to tempo, it sounds okay. Now watch this. That sounds like it's more difficult when you hear it up to tempo, but you see it's really easy. All I'm doing, I'm really not that fast of a player. I have to rely on as many little cheats as I can. And what I'm doing here is I'm just taking my ring finger on the 10th fret, third string, and I'm sliding it down to the 9th fret. And then I'm playing the 7th fret, third string. And it actually all happens at once, so I just pick that once. You can see it's just a slide pull off. That kind of hurts a little bit on an acoustic guitar. So maybe some of that's because I've been playing a lot lately, but so let me let me back up. We have Now watch this. So again, we're at the ninth fret now, third string, seventh fret, ninth fret, fourth string. And then our last note is on the seventh fret, uh, third string. And then I played it one more time just for almost to fill it, fill out the measure like that. All right, let me back up. I'll do this very slowly. And and hopefully the 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 most important thing in this is that you understand why these notes work, not just how to play them, but why the major scale for the key of D. How we got there. Remember our root fret was up here. And then this mixolydian uh, scale, little twist by adding this one note. You don't have to do that, but it gives it a different feel. Okay, so here's the notes for the D part. So the timing of it is... And again, just tap your foot, keep it slow in the beginning. Check out the slow version of the jam track I have as well. Um, don't try and play it up the tempo. In fact, start with that slower one, even if you feel confident, just, just to get the timing. That's, that's important. You don't want to break your timing. Okay. Oh, one other little thing to point out. When I came to this note, uh, some of you may be going, hey, wait, that's not part of that major pentatonic scale for the key of D. Well, you're right, it's not. But look where it's at. It's part of the minor pentatonic scale for the key of D. Remember, minor pentatonic scale is up here. There's that note, right? So you can actually, I just came up here and grabbed that note. That's where that came from, was, uh, was from the minor pentatonic scale. And that's why it gave a little bit of a bluesy flavoring, if you will, uh, when, when I threw that note in there. All right, so there's the A part. We have... Now we have the D part. Now we go to the G. The G13. And for the G13, or the G chord, um, Let's talk. Let's think about our our bases, our boundaries. So G. Uh, hopefully you're with me now. Your root fret when you're playing a G major bar chord is the third fret. So now we know our minor pentatonic scale. So if we want to get bluesy, it's all right here. Um, if you want to go to the major pentatonic scale, hopefully you know this by now. We're gonna slide down one, two, three frets. Well now my fingers off the fretboard, but the nut's taking care of it. So we. There's your E major pentatonic scale. Here it is an octave higher. 
Okay, now, there's, uh, as I mentioned in the blues lead course, there's some different patterns. We have pattern one, which most of this we've been dealing with so far has been pattern one. That's kind of your main pattern anyway. But there's, there's actually four other patterns. And so for this, we're going to, for this D part, what I did was I switched to D major pentatonic, follow with me, not minor, D, I'm sorry, G major pentatonic scale pattern four. So not pattern one. So pattern one would have been down here or up here. But I went to, here would be pattern two. Not there. Not the pattern three, but pattern four is all the way up here. For the major pentatonic scale, for the key of G. So if you're playing a G, you have that scale. Now here, here or that pattern in that in that scale. Now here's a quick little cheat in something I use all the time. You're gonna love this. So if you're playing a G bar chord, wherever these two fingers are, check check out the relation to this. If I t just take on that same fret here. Look at that. So from here, from this fret, if I start on the sixth string, I can go slide up and I got a little box here. I got a little box here. And I got a little box here. Well, those are all major, that's all part of pattern four of the major pentatonic scale for the key of G. So that, that'll work for any chord. So if we were playing an F chord, Watch this. See how it's got that kind of happy country sound? But you can see how it relates to the chord. So anyway, my point in that is, from the G, now we slide up to here. And this is, the, this is where I played that little uh, lick. So when the song goes to the key of G, I went... And that's how I got there. That's why these notes up here work. It's because we're playing it over the G chord. Okay, so here's the notes. I, I started here on the seventh fret, uh, third string, uh, sorry, fourth string. We're gonna slide up to the ninth fret, fourth string. Now we're gonna play seventh fret, third string. Ninth fret, third string. So it's a little box. Now we're going to go to the 8th fret 2nd string. Another way I could have done that was... But I decided to do it up here, and you'll see why. Because I had these high notes that I wanted to hit. Those notes. So, from here, we're going to take... I use my ring finger for this. Um, and I go to the 10th fret 2nd string. Watch this. So it's just a straight walk up, 10th, 11th, and 12th on the second string. And then from here, I can put my pointer finger down on the 10th fret first string. And then we slide back to the 10th fret second string. And then land on the 8th fret second string. So. That's the timing of it. Oh, that's another little thing. Watch this. I slid that. I didn't pick each note like this. Although you could have done it that way. It's just easier for me to slide. And then I hit that eighth net, eighth fret second string again, just uh, to to round out the measure. Okay, let's back up. We let's we'll start from the A part. Now we're going to the D. Now we're going to the G, and look where the G is in relation to where your last note was for the D. So that's why I picked that because it's just right there. So 
So then the song goes to the C. And then what I played was this little thing. Now, some of you may have noticed something uh, visually um, on the neck. So, so when, you, when I'm playing these notes, you may be saying, hey, that's looking an awful lot like the A minor pentatonic scale. You're right, right there at the fifth fret and same kind of notes. Why does that work? Well, here's the thing. When you're playing in the key, when the chord, it all plays off the chord. So when the chord is a C chord and you're down here, you're playing the C major pentatonic scale. So the C major pentatonic scale and the A minor pentatonic scale are actually the same thing on the on the neck. It's the same notes. And and it's the chord that determines the sound. So here's what I mean by that. So when we're playing in the key of C, so we're we're over the or we're at the C part of the song, right? So the chord's a C. So a C minor pentatonic would be here. Because your root fret would be here on the eighth, uh, the eighth fret, right? So when we want to sound, we don't want to sound bluesy. We want to sound happy. We go to the A major pentatonic scale, and to do that, remember we slide down one, two, three frets. Well, look where we're at. So this played with a C chord. Sounds happy. Now watch what happens. I can play those same notes, but if I change the chord underneath it to an A, now watch this. So you can see how just the chord underneath it is what really gives it the the definition. So there is some overlap there, but um, Hopefully that makes sense. Well, that makes it convenient then to, as the song loops back to the A part, you know, you're already in position to, to be able to play, you know, something in A. So he, these are the specific notes that I played. So I went 8th um, uh, fret 1st string, 5th fret 1st string. So you can see that's just the top part of pattern 1. Then I went 8th fret 2nd string, 5th fret 1st string. 8th fret 2nd string again, and then the last note is the 5th fret 2nd string. So we have, so we have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and that's how it concludes, uh, at least the first half, playing through the first half. Let me back up now and play through all of that slowly. So you have this as a reference, and then uh, and then we'll conclude. So we have. And at that point, the song goes back to the A, and then I play. But that's all going to be covered in the second video. But hopefully, this is uh, some light bulbs have gone off for some of you, and you can start to see that uh, you can switch keys as the chord switch. And, it, and when you do that, you also you have other options. You can stay major, or you can go minor. And depending on which one you choose, it's going to have a different feel. And you can do that over each chord. So it just has a, you have a ton of variables to work with. So in the beginning, uh, you're going to want to plan it all out a little bit. I'll be a little more methodical about it. Or at least that's how I think of it. I, you know, I, I like to kind of structure it. If I know that there's these four chords, I kind of noodle around a lot in the beginning and just say, okay, well, so the first chord's an A. So I have option here. I also have an option to make it sound sad or bluesy. So wh where am I going to start this thing? And you kind of plan it out a little bit. Um, it, you're learning to speak a new language. That's really what this is. So you're not going to be able to just improv and just launch into articulate sentences in the beginning. But over time, you will be able to. And ble uh, over time, the more you do of this kind of stuff, you'll f you'll be more comfortable with it, and it'll just... It'll be like having a conversation. That's really all a jam is. It's you have a, a topic of interest that you both know something about, and you're 
having a dialogue back and forth. So everybody knows the boundaries. The boundaries don't change. There's only 12 notes in music. Um, so you are limited in your resources. So uh, anyway, that's how that works. Now, uh, the jam track for this um, goes back and forth from lead part to, uh, to the rhythm part. So you're going to be trading off. So we just learned the first half of the lead part. Now, in the second video, the next one, you're going to learn the second half of the lead part. So there's really eight measures total. We just covered four of them. So we're going to cover the next four. And then there's another video, as I mentioned at the beginning of this, that uh, on the rhythm part. So when you when it's your turn to play rhythm, uh, you'll know how to do that. And that's just what's so fun about this jam track is you can it's just a back and forth, and uh, it's like kind of like a real live scenario. That's kind of how it would really work. So okay, there's a lot of information in this, but um, hopefully, uh, like I said, light bulbs are going off, and this is been meaningful to you. All right, we'll see you in part two.